This is Chesterton Radio, your home for podcasts of works by G.K. Chesterton, plus drama, comedy, mystery, science fiction, big bands, and much more. The soundtrack to your Chesterton day at chestertonradio.com. Arch Obler's Plays A Story in the Night Tonight, James Cagney in Arch Obler's dramatization of the most talked-of book of the year, Johnny Got His Gun by Dalton Trumbull. tell you of Joe Bonham. 22 years ago, he went to war. They carried him back from that war. They carried him back because he had no arms, no legs, no ears with which to hear, no eyes with which to see, no mouth with which to speak. Today, he lies alone in a room in a hospital close to your city. He's living flesh and he waits. Your world is shut off from Joe Bonham. He has only the world within his own mind. We tell you of Joe Bonham. These are the thoughts of a boy who, 22 years ago, went to war. Somebody listen to me. I'm talking to you. Somebody listen to me. Gotta talk to somebody. It's dark and lonely. Somebody... No. Going out of my head again. How can you hear what ain't got a tongue, ain't got a mouth, ain't got... No, won't think of that anymore. Got to think of something, yeah, something else. If I don't think, my head, yeah, quick, think about when I was a kid. Hey, Joe, come on in, swimming. Yeah, swimming. When I was a kid, I went swimming. Dive in the river, feel the water against my legs and my arms. Now I haven't got any le... No, no, won't think of that. Think about... My town. It's the nicest little old place on earth, Shale City. I gotta remember. Hamburger, get your hot hamburger, get your hot hamburger. Yeah, best hamburgers in the world. All right, boy, here's 30 cents. Go down and get three hamburgers. Pa. Oh, they're delicious. If I could only cook like this. Ma, she... No. No, don't think of her. Think about... (laughs) County Fair. See the lady cut in half the fourth part of a dollar. Oh, second rider, defying death inside a street up and down circular wall. I, 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 I can't remember anymore. I gotta remember, I gotta. If I don't remember things, I'll think, and if I think, no. I gotta remember something, something. Girls, think about girls. Quick, think about girls. Joe? Karine? Joe, I'm scared. I'm so scared. No. Kiss me. Hold me. We, we shouldn't have turned the lights out. Your old man will be sore. He understands. Mm, your lips. Mm. Don't go. They'll kill you. I gotta go. When you're drafted, you gotta. Oh, Joe. Joe, I don't want you to go. Hold me. Tight. Maybe we'll never get another chance. Now, Joe. In your arms, Joe. In your arms. In your arms. My arms. My arms. What? What? Joe, hold me. Don't go, Johnny, don't. Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Joe, I'm part of you now. Don't go, Joe. Go, Joe. I haven't got any arms. <laughs> you hear me, Kareen? I haven't got any arms. 
I haven't got any arms. <sighs> What's the matter with me? I didn't find it out yesterday or the day before. It was 1939, 1938, 1937. A long time ago. Joe. Karine, you're still in my head. I'll tell you, as if you were here. Here's how I found out everything about myself. I woke up like out of a dream. It was like I was, I was in the water. I tried to swim, but I didn't have any arms. I started to kick my legs to float up in the air out of the bed. But I couldn't kick. I didn't have any legs. I threw my head back. I started to yell. I only started. But how can you yell when you haven't got them? I began to reach out, Karine. The only way I could reach out. With the nerves of my skin. The hole in my face. Feel the skin creeping around the edge of it. It went. It went. I was blind. What a lousy dream. Nobody could live like that. Just dream and that's all. But it wasn't a dream. It wasn't a dream. Mother. Mother, where are you? Hurry, Mother. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And wake me up. I'm having a nightmare, Mother. Where are you? Mother, listen to me. I can't stand it. Mother, please, please, tell me it's not me. Not me. Not me. No, no, not me. Oh, please. That's the way I found out a long time ago. Who was I telling that to? Joe. Oh, Karine. Still in my head. In my heart. Now, now I'll tell you about how I found out about time. About the days. Knowing about the days you're living through, that's important, see? But all I remembered was... Dive in the dugout and then... And that was all. A day in September 1918. And that's all. Time stopped then. Start time over again. But how could I catch hold of time when I was caught inside myself? Vibrations. I had it. When the nurse came into the room, the vibration of her footsteps running up through the floor, through the bed, through the springs of the bed, into me. All I had to do was count the seconds, then the minutes, then the hours between each visit she made, until I had 24 hours counted up in my head. And after that, I'd be able to figure the days out just by counting up her visits. One day, the minute the nurse left me, I began to count. One, two, three, Second by second. Four, five, second by second. Six, when seven, I counted 60, eight, that nine, meant a minute ten, as nearly as, as I was able to figure it. 13, but I always lost count. I'd think of something else. Then I'd lose count again. One, two, three, one, two. Four, day after five, day after day, four, but I could never keep track. Five, I couldn't. Six, I couldn't. Five. And all the time... All the time, the days were running away from me. And then, one day it happened. The skin on the side of my neck, the half of a forehead above the mask. Lying there all the years gone by, I got to thinking that maybe there was some way I could use those pieces of skin. Skin free to the air. They were healthy. I got to thinking what a man did with his skin. To feel with. But that didn't seem enough. To sweat with. Yeah, sweat with. Hot and cold. Sunrise and sunset. Just like that. The idea came into my head just like that. All I had to do was to feel with my skin. When it changed from cool to warm on that little piece of skin, it'd be sunrise and the beginning of a day. I got to thinking about the nurse and how many visits she made me each day and when she made them. Yeah, I'd better start with the nurse. She changes the bedding. In a hospital, they, they must change bedding in the morning. Maybe around uh, 8 o'clock. So all i got to do is wait till she changes the bedclothes. That'll mean it's morning. Then wait, maybe 18, 20 hours, and that'll be next morning. That'll be sunrise. You can feel the heat of sunrise against your skin. Yeah. So I waited until the next time she changed the bedding. She walked away. Calm down. Calm down because you haven't proved anything yet. Calm down and wait and count her visits. Number two. 
I dozed off and woke. Visit number three. Mm, time got all mixed up. Then four, and then... The fifth time. Now all of, a sudden, all of a sudden, I knew it was happening. My heart stopped. My breath stopped. I knew it was happening. Slow at first, crawling along my skin. Warmer and warmer. The rising sun. In my room. In my room. I'd won. I'd won. I'd caught up with time again. The sun. It was dawn. It was dawn for the world and for me. I... I could smell the dawn. Yeah, me without a face lying there. And the smell of the dew on the grass. And me without eyes shading my eyes and seeing the sun coming up over the mountains back home. And the hills going pink and lavender like the inside of a seashell. The sun warming my little piece of skin. And me seeing without eyes the town where I was born. And me without ears hearing the lowing of the cows waiting to be milked. And babies kicking in their cribs and rubbing their eyes with their fists. It's sunrise. And I've got it. And now I'll always know when it's sunrise. And they can't take it away from me. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I may never have anything else. But I'll always have dawn. And the morning sunlight. A year went by fast. I was a busy guy. I learned a lot. Yeah, could even tell my nurses apart. The day nurse always walked to the bed with four steps. She was always the same, but the night nurses seemed to change. One of them... <sighs> must have cried when she looked at me. I felt her tears wet on me. I like to think she was young and beautiful. But every night, summer and winter, week in and week out, month in and month out... Every night, I was with you, Karine. With you, darling. My arms around you. Yours around me. With you, Karine. Joe, my darling. Close to you. My dearest. My arms around you. My lover. And yours around me. Mine. With you, Karine. Oh, Joe. Joe. Two years went by after I discovered time. Three years went by. After I discovered time. The fourth year started awfully slow. One day I felt vibrations. Vibrations heavier and heavier and then they stopped. I, I knew they were standing around the bed. After all these years, visitors. And all at once, crazy thoughts went through my head. It may be your mother. No. Karine. No, no, not Karine. Not Karine standing by my bed. You can't see me. Not this way. Not you, Karine. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Then a hand came to rest on my forehead. A man's hand. Doctors. Yes. Maybe doctors come to examine me. Oh. Somebody was touching at my nightshade over my left breast. The cloth fell back against my chest again. It was heavy now. Weighed down by something. Medal. They've given me a medal. Me. A medal. Me. A medal. Me. The generals were here. Around my bed. The generals. The big guys. The famous guys who still had arms and legs and could still see and talk and smell and taste. In my throat I felt a tearing of something that used to be a voice. I was talking to them, and they couldn't hear me. I was saying, listen, big guys, I'm lying here like a side of beef, and for what? War. We're going to war. Yeah, someone said that, so I went. But why? Why? Somebody just said, let's go out and fight for liberty. Liberty? What kind of liberty? How much liberty, and whose idea of liberty? A guy says, come on, let's fight for liberty. And he can't show you liberty. If you're going to die for liberty, you've got to know in advance what liberty is and whose idea of liberty they're talking about and just how much of that liberty we're going to have. Maybe that's a bad way to think. The big guys say it's bad, and I heard them. 
in the schools and the newspapers and the legislatures and the congresses. That's their business. They sound wonderful. This ground is sanctified by blood. They shall not have died in vain. Our noble dead. But I'm asking you, big guys, what do the dead say? Did any one of them ever come back and say... I'm glad I'm dead, because death is always better than dishonor. Did they say... I'm glad I died to make the world safe for democracy. Nobody but the dead know whether all these things people talk about are worth dying for or not. And the dead can't talk. So the words about noble death and sacred blood and honor and such are all put into dead lips by those that got no right to speak for the dead. I'm asking you, big guys... How did they feel about it just before they died? Did all those guys die thinking of democracy and freedom and liberty and honor? You know they didn't. They died crying in their minds like little kids. They died crying for the face of a friend. They died crying for the voice of a mother or father or wife or baby. They died moaning and crying for life. I know. I'm the nearest thing to a dead man on earth. There's nothing bigger than life. What's Noel about having your legs and arms blown off? What's Noel about being blind and deaf and dumb? I'm dead, big guys, and I died for nothing. You hear me? Nothing, nothing. You hear me, big guys? But they didn't hear me. Just as you couldn't hear me, Kareem, if you were standing next to me. All the generals heard was the blowing of the air and the tube in my throat. When I heard the vibrations of the footsteps that said they were going, I began to think. The vibrations. Up to now, I thought only of the vibrations coming to me. How about making my vibrations go to them? Yes, vibrations to them. A footstep on the floor is a kind of vibration. The tap of a telegraph key is another kind. I had it. I had it. When I was a kid, Bill Harper and me, we, we had a telegraph set used to telegraph to each other. Dot, dash, dot, dash, dot, dash, dot. I remember the code, the Morse code. All I had to do to break through to Pete, to the people outside, was to lie in bed and dot, dash to the nurse. I could give messages and receive messages. I raised my head from my pillow. I dropped it. Then I did it twice quickly. That was it. With my head, raised my head, let it fall on the pillow. The Morse code. S-O-S, help. I tapped it out of my pillow with my head. S-O-S, all over the world, that meant help. S-O-S, help, help. Then the door of the room jarred open and, and the nurse's footsteps came up to the bed. S-O-S, S-O-S, over and over again. She was looking at me. I knew it, I knew it. S-O-S, Help me, S-O-S, help me, S-O-S, oh, why can't you understand? S-O-S, help me, S-O-S, help me, S-O-S, S-O-S, help me, S-O-S, help me. My head full of it, tapping it out with my head over and over, over and over, couldn't stop. Why won't they hear me? Why won't they understand? Why won't they hear me? Karine, why? No. There isn't any, Kareen. There isn't nothing. I've been talking in my head. There's nothing for me. Nothing. S-O-S. I don't know Help what me. day it is. I don't know what month it is. I don't know what year it is. I've been tapping for years and years and nobody hears me. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Someone's come into the room. Footstep right. My regular day nurse. Hers are heavy. Who is this one? Start tapping now. What? What is this one doing? Opening the nightshirt. She's moving the tip of her finger against my skin. Uh, huh? Drawing something. Huh? I know. The letter M. I know. Shake, shake my head. Yes, yes, I know, I know. I understand. It's M, M, wonderful M. Writing something else on my skin. E. Yes, yes, I got that. R, yes. Another R, yes. Now what? Why? Nothing more. M-E-R-R-Y. Mary.
Mary. Writing again. C H R I S T M A S. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, nurse, Merry I Christmas. understand. Christmas. Nodding my head to tell you I understand. I can't say it so you can hear me, but in my heart I'm saying it. Merry Christmas, nurse. God bless you. Bells in my town. I'm hearing them in my head, nurse. It was the night before Christmas. Mother. And all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Mother, I hear you. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in a hope that St. Nicholas thing would be there. Every Christmas Eve, I remember. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team, gave a whistle, and away they all flew like down from a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Merry Christmas, Mother. Merry Christmas, Mother. Nurse. New nurse, smart nurse. She'll pay attention to me. Old nurse didn't understand. New nurse, you've got to understand. Tavern, I'll start. There, nurse, I did it. Did you understand it? Three, two, and three. S O S. Did you understand it? I'll do it again. Morse code. You understand? Morse code. Watch, nurse, watch. If I had a tongue, if I had a mouth, I'd yell it at you. I'd scream it at you. But I have nothing but the tapping of my head, so watch, nurse, watch. If you turn and walk out of the room and never come back, you will be carrying my life with you. Your life and death to me, nurse. Look, I'll, I'll tap it again. See? S-O-S. Help me. S-O-S. Oh, I'll do it again. I'm praying now, nurse. Me, just an ordinary guy, I'm praying. Oh, please, God, make her understand what I'm trying to tell her. Please, God, make her understand. I know you're a busy guy. I know there are millions of people train, playing, praying to you every minute. I know all these things, God, and, and I don't blame you for getting behind in your orders. Nobody's perfect, but what I want is such a little thing. All I want you to do is to take a tiny little idea that's in my mind and put it in her mind two, maybe three feet away. That's all I want, God. Just a little idea that's in my mind and put it in her mind. It's such a little thing, God. Such a little thing. She's going away. She's gone out of the room. No, no, can't be true. Can't shove me down under the ground again, bury me deep again. No, no, I won't believe it, I won't. I won't start crying now. She'll come back. She's my life. She's my chance at life. She will come back. She will, she will, she will. Door. She's back. Brought someone with her. Man's finger on my head. What? Finger tapping on my head. Tapping out W. H. Tapping out the code on my head. A. T. W. H. A. T. What? D. O. Y. O. U. Y. O. U. U. W. A. N T W A N T What do you want? What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? I want to get out. Let me out. That's all I want. I've been lying here for years and years in a room in a bed with a, a little covering of skin. Now I want out. I've got to get out. If I had legs, I could run away. I could get away. I could... I could get out into the open where there's air, where there's room, and where I'm not in a hole and smothering. Inside me, I scream and howl and push and fight room and air for escape from the smothering, from the loneliness. So, let me out of here and take me back into the world. No, I didn't tap that out. What I just said, I only was thinking. Won't say it to you waiting up there, no. Before I ask you up there, before I tap it out with my head, I've got to think out 
just what I'm going to tell you. It may be my last chance. Mm. I've got it. I've got it. Listen, you up there. I'm tapping it out with my head. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Let me out. I can earn my keep. I can do a job like anyone else. Take me out of here and build a glass case for, for me so people can see me. Take me in my glass case to the beaches, to the county fairs and the church bazaars and the circuses and the traveling carnivals. You'll do a wonderful business with me and I could pay you for the trouble. They've never seen nothing like me. I'm something you can really holler about. I'm the dead man who's alive. The live man who's dead. I'm the man who made the world safe for democracy. Take me into the places where men work and make things. Take me there and say, boys, here's a cheap way to get by. Maybe times are bad and your salaries are low. Don't worry, boys, because you'll have your chance. There'll be another war along pretty soon, and then maybe you'll be lucky like me. Take me into the schoolhouses, all the schoolhouses in the world. They'll scream at first and have nightmares at night, but they'll get used to it because they've got to get used to it. And it's best to start them young. Take me into the colleges and universities and academies and convents. Call the girls together, all the healthy, beautiful young go- girls. Point to me and say, girls, here is your father. Look, girls, here is your lover. Call all the young men together and say, here is your brother, here is your best friend, and here are you, young men. Take me wherever there are parliaments and diets and congresses and chambers of statesmen. I want to be there when they talk about honor and justice and making the world safe. Put my glass case upon the speaker's desk, and every time the gavel drops, let me feel its vibration through my little glass case. Then let them draft notes and ultimatums and protests and accusations. But before they vote on them, before they give the order for all the little guys to start killing each other, let the main guy wrap his gavel on my case and point down at me and say, Gentlemen, here is the only issue before this house, and that is... Are you for this thing here, or are you against it? And if they are against it, then let them stand up like men and vote. And if they are for it, let them be hanged and drawn and quartered and paraded through the streets and thrown out into the, into the fields where no clean animal will touch them. And may no green thing ever grow where they rot. Take me into your churches, your great towering cathedrals, which have to be rebuilt every 50 years because they are destroyed by war. Carry me in my glass box down the aisles where kings and priests and brides and children at their confirmations have gone so many times before to kiss a splinter of wood from a true cross on which was nailed the body of a man who was lucky enough to die. Set me high on your altars and call on God to look down upon his murderous little children, his dearly beloved little children. Then bring in the fierce ones, the spawners of hate, the inventors of slogans. Bring them in and make them look at me and then dare them, dare them to break the peace. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have brought you James Cagney playing the leading role in Dalton Trumbo's memorable novel of the year, Johnny Got His Gun. The book was dramatized for radio by Arch Oberler. The musical score was written, conducted by Gordon Jenkins. Mr. Cagney can now be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, The Fighting 69th, and in the forthcoming production, Torrid Zone. In preparation is City of Conquest. The book, Johnny Got His Gun, is the prize-winning novel by Dalton Trumbo. All of us want to thank Mr. Cagney and Mr. Trumbo for their great contribution to this program. Next week, it is our pleasure to present an actor known and respected by all of us, Mr. Ronald Coleman, in an unusual play, The Most Dangerous Game. Next week, then, Mr. Ronald Coleman. Arch Obler's plays are a presentation of the National Broadcasting Company. Tonight's play came to you from Hollywood's Radio City. This is the National Broadcasting Company.
This is Chesterton Radio, the true, good, and beautiful at ChestertonRadio.com.